I want to keep us in line, I guess you might say. i also like to introduce Gail. Gail here, uh, I was his prayer partner when I first started. Best I remember, at the very first one I came, Gail was, Gail was bringing the, uh, the report, and I was his prayer partner. And I'm going to tell you, if you've never heard Gail speak, you're missing something because he's a great speaker. So you're going to have to be patient with me, and I'll get through this, and, and I'll tell you a little bit what, about what the Gideons are doing. Gideons, so you know who we are, we're, just, we're, not, we're the guys who place the Bibles in the hotels and motels. I'm sure most of you know that. And I'm, I'm sure that you've seen them when you go in laying there on the table. Well, that is where we started back in 1900, approximately around that area there. They started in early 1900. Actually, I think it was 1899, to be honest with you, is when they really got started. And they started placing those Bibles in the hotels and motels around the country. Uh, from that time there... Uh, they decided they needed some qualifications to be Gideons. And they came up with, with a deal which changed over the years, but we are professional businessmen, is what we call ourselves, as professional businessmen, usually are members of Gideons. And that's my, my uh, plea to you this morning, is if any of you here, you gentlemen, would, would like to come and join the Gideons and the ministry we have, we invite you to come talk to us. We'd love to have you come and join us. We have quite an endeavor in front of us. We are all members of a local Christian church. That's one of the qualifications you have to have is being a member of a local Christian church uh, in good standing. And we would love for you to come and join us because the ministry we have is very outreaching and it's very, very fulfilling, I guess you could say. And we enjoy it so much seeing the word of God go out. And it's really cool that we get to go sometimes. Not all of us speak, but when we do get to go, we get to see how you do your services here. And it's interesting to see how all the churches are different. And we worship the Lord in the same manner. But our service is just a little bit different. And that's like taking your Lord's Supper. We weren't quite sure what we were doing this morning. But it's always the same. It's uplifting to the Lord. And we're glad that we get to do that. Uh, as I said, we're all members of a local Christian church. Uh, the Gideons are, and of course, the Ladies Auxiliaries. Uh, we believe that the Bible is God's infallible and their word of God. Everything in it points to Jesus Christ as being our Lord and Savior, God being our Father. And we believe that wholeheartedly, that everything is in this Bible is true. I don't think you can take any part of it out. When you do, you're making a huge mistake. And we believe that. And uh, in saying that, what I'd like to do, if I may, at this time, we're going to try to get going into this where I can get started and, and try to show you just a little bit about the effects that God's Word has on people around the world. And I'd like to go ahead and play the video if you guys could. It's, a short, it's not really short. It lasts about nine minutes. Let's give you an opportunity to see some of the work that the Gideons are doing. Thank you. 
steal money from the collection plate to support my drug habit. So when she would come by on a Sunday morning, I would be up, dressed, and ready to go. And she thought, oh, the word of God is really getting into my nephew. It wasn't the word of God. It was the money from the collection plate. After a period of time, some of the leaders caught me taking the money, and they took me to a place they call the upper room. <laughs> I can tell you, after having that conversation in the upper room with those church leaders, I didn't have any more use for that church. I got back out into the streets of Philadelphia, got deeper involved with drugs and alcohol and prostitution. But that emptiness was still there. I thought, well, maybe if I joined the military, maybe that would be the answer. I joined the Army. Within eight weeks, I went to wall twice. And Uncle Sam concluded, you are useless, and we're not going to waste our time trying to make a soldier out of you. There I was, a reject from Uncle Sam's Army. I started working in a slaughterhouse. And there was a young man working in that slaughterhouse by the name of Joe Frazier. Joe and I, we would sit on our lunch hour, and we would share life experiences with each other. Joe would try to influence me with his goodness. And he would say, hey, Lee, you need to get off the street. Leave the drugs alone. Get into the gym. Train. I would tell him, I don't want to hurt you, Joe. I went on. I continued my life of drugs and alcohol. Joe Frazier went on to be the heavyweight champ of the world. Still searching for something to fill the void that was in my life. At the age of 30, I was on my third marriage. Still searching. Still searching for something to fill that emptiness. My wife had came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Tell me how Jesus could change my life. I told her nobody could change me. She said, but Jesus can change your life. She began to have a Bible study in the home. And when she did, those Christians would come over to my house on a, set, on, on a Tuesday and a Wednesday evening. And I did not like those Christians coming into my house. 
That's the Lord we serve. No matter how dark our sins are, <clears throat> no matter what we've done, no matter how many people we've hurt, we serve a mighty God that's able to forgive us. All he calls us to be obedient to him. Come and serve him. That's what he's called for us to do. And to take that scripture where other people have the same opportunity as this gentleman. If it wasn't for those Gideons out there, he may have never met the Lord. And that's what we're about. That's what the Gideons are all about. Getting out there and placing the word. Because the word changes lives. Uh, the Gideons, as I said, was in motels and hotels for, uh, for when they first started. In uh, 1941, you, a lot of you people know what was going on at that time, the war. And guess what? The Gideons were given the opportunity to start passing out bu uh, scriptures to our military personnel. What a privilege that is. And, and I ask you to pray that they never, never, ever take that away from us, that we're always able to give it to our military people. <clears throat> In 1946, they started going to college, uh, high schools and college campuses, uh, spreading the, the, the scripture there. And the amazing thing about that is, is simply this. We today are still doing that. The Gideons go out on the streets in front of our schools. When we've got a, 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 a public sidewalk, we can stand on and pass out scriptures. But we cannot go inside those schools without being invited. We go overseas. Those doors are wide open for the Gideons to come in. Those people are thrilled that the word of God is coming to them, that they open the doors and invite you in and say, yes, we want those scriptures. Give them to them. Give them to our students. And that's what we do. And it's just not the students. We find that we also have a lot of the teachers and even police departments who are watching the Gideons as they go, sometimes like a hawk to be sure of what they're doing and what they're about. Even they end up asking for a Bible. What a difference God makes in people's lives. And that's what it's all about. Now we're in prisons, ministries, we're in a hotel, motel, we're, in, uh, we're even veterinary clinics. If they allow the Gideons to come and place Bibles, we're willing to go. And I want, to know, want you to know something. That's why we're here today. We want you to know that's what we're up to. That's what we're all about is spreading that gospel around the world. And the demand is mighty. I, don't, I can't remember. They told us in our last meeting how many we were behind as far as scriptures going, as trying to get the scriptures overseas, but it's a lot, a lot. And it takes money to purchase those Bibles, and that's what we're all about. We raise money within our camp to go buy those Bibles and distribute them. Um, to this date, since 1900, the Gideons have distributed over 2 billion, that's billion with a B, Bibles around the world. <clears throat> That's quite a quite an accomplishment, really. But it's not really how many Bibles we place. It really has more to do with the lives that God changes through those Bibles, through those written scriptures. We've heard so many testimonies about one scripture changing entire families' lives due to God's holy word. And uh, <clears throat> that's what we're about, is trying to get those words out, getting God's word out. At this time, I would like, if I may, to read you some scripture. The Gideons believe that we're actually an extended missionary arm of the local church because we are members of the local church. And it's a delight to get to come and hear of the missionaries that you have placed, especially in China, where God's word really is, really is catching fire. God's at work around the world. Uh, Isaiah 5511 is one of our theme verses for the Gideons. And what I'd like to do, if I may, is I'd like to read Isaiah 55, 1 through 11, so you can hear it. Understand he's a prophet. Isaiah's a prophet. It's amazing to read what this prophet has to say and how it relates to the New Testament and the, and the coming of Jesus Christ, the prediction of coming. You know, Isaiah predicted the birth of Jesus Christ. And when you read about that and read what he's got to say here, how these words from Isaiah 55 through 11, how it speaks to us through the New Testament of what Christ himself said. So I'm going to read that, if I may, real quickly. <clears throat> Isaiah 55, 11, or 55, 1 through 11, it says this, Come all ye who are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine, milk, without money, and without cost. <clears throat> 
Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? It says, listen to me and eat what is good. We just took the Lord's Supper. What does the bread represent? Eat what is good. And, and that just kind of at me. And then the waters. You who are thirsty. How many times do we read Christ saying, come to me, I'm living waters. Fountains flowing up within you. Isaiah stating this some 750 years before the birth of Christ. It says in verse 3, it says, Give an ear and come to hear me that your soul may live. I'll make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. I see I have made it. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know will, will hasten to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. I've read that this morning through John the book of John, find him while we can. Let the wicked forsake, forsake their ways, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. <clears throat> and to our God, he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, <clears throat> my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts, then your thoughts. And listen to this in verse 10 as it leads into 11. It says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making its buds flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty who will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I've sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. That's the Gideon's theme verse. So my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me void, but will accomplish what he desires. Uh, when those scriptures go out, these people, Leroy Kennedy mentioned that the Bible had fell on the ground and opened to, to the scripture that he saw and talked about your sins being scarlet. How God can change a life through those Bibles is amazing. And we've heard many, many a, a testimony. Just this last week, we had our faith fund rally. And there's a speaker there who had been in Africa, I believe is where that was. And Gail, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But he was making mention, and Jesus makes mention through John, the book of John, and all the Gospels about the miracles that he performed. He said, if you don't believe in me, believe in the miracles. And I think about... I think about the blind man. Remember Jesus and his disciples asking him, who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus said, neither. This happened to this gentleman that the glory of God, the work of the Lord could be fulfilled through him. You start reading these things that's taking place in the, in, in the miracles in the New Testament that Jesus did every day for the people to see, and I go back to see what a lot of people say today. Well, that was back in those days. No, the Lord's at work today. And we have Gideons overseas that can tell you some of these stories. One that we heard this week was this. They were asked not to go into the schools. <clears throat> I can't remember exactly where they were, but I know it was South Africa. And they was told them that they couldn't go into the schools, that they didn't, didn't want them there. But then they ended up opening up the doors to them. And they went, and they passed out Bible after Bible after Bible. And finally, they had another school they went to, and they said there were something like 300 and some odd students in this school. They was releasing the kids out of class, one class at a time, and there's over 350 students, if I understood that correctly. As those students come out, they had a box of Bibles, and the Gideons knew they was in trouble. They only had one box left. They've been doing it all week. They had one box of Bibles left, which contains, I think, 125 Bibles, if I'm not mistaken. One box, but yet 300 kids got Bibles. Pretty amazing, and a miracle. 
God never changes. He's always at work. So that was the miracle of his self. And God's always doing that. We hear, we hear testimony upon testimony about these things that's taking place. It's, it's really amazing how God works. And I, I'm telling you, we've got a work to do. And that's what we need to be about. We are Christians. He's called us to be his servants. <clears throat> so we need to be about it. We need to be seeing that when we go out in our workplaces or where we are, we need to be spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because there's people hurting, hurting out there just as Leroy Kennedy, what he was going through in his life. He saw no way out. He just keep getting, <clears throat> getting deeper and deeper into his sins. Thinking he couldn't change. There's nothing that Christ can't overcome in your life. He just asks you to turn to him, accept him, and he will save you. I want you to know that as I was thinking about Isaiah 55, 11. Now, before I finish real quickly, I'd like to tell you a little bit about some of the programs that the Gideons do have. And I noticed you had one out here in your uh, lobby. <clears throat> It's a Gideon cards. These Gideon cards, we ask you to use them. They're free. Now, I don't know if you go buy a card at the, at the gift shop or not, but they usually cost you somewhere around five bucks. These are absolutely free, and they got a great message on them. You can send them out in recognition, in memory, or congratulations, or whatever. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy getting cards <clears throat> in the mail and letters. So this is a great way to reach out to people. We do have a little insert inside these cards. Because we are about passing out Bibles, they do cost us money. We ask if you can to give a donation. And that card there tells you how to do that. If you can give a donation, when you send these cards, uh, then we'll use that money to buy a Bible. Also, you can purchase Bibles for your loved ones through these by simply sending in your, your gift or whatever it may be and designating what you'd like for it to go for and to whom. So that's a great way for the Gideons to, do, uh, to raise some money to buy Bibles. It's a great way for you to get the Word of Christ out. Again, uh, our Gideon program. Uh, the other thing that, that we have is Friends of the Gideons. A lot of you ask us about the Gideons and uh, how you become one. Well, you know, pastors can't be Gideons. That's, that's one thing they can't do. That's, that's the only thing I know a pastor can't do is be a Gideon. He can't after he retires, I guess, but, but until he retires, he can't be a Gideon. We have a lot of people who have actually joined us in this great way of you getting involved with the Gideons and helping seeing the God's scriptures placed around the world. As you can join this, and you get X amount, I can't remember how many free Bibles it is, but there's quite a few free Bibles come to you. So as you see us going out and passing out these little brown Bibles right here, which costs us like a buck forty a piece to have them made, <clears throat> Uh, we send them to you for whatever it costs you to join the Gideons, and I can't remember what that is. I'm sorry about that, but we do ask you to check it out if you would. But this is a great way for you to get involved with the Gideons and help us. If you can't be a member, you can help us out in that manner, and uh, we ask you to do that if you can. Uh, another thing that has cropped up as I think about the Gideons, how, how people give, all of us... If you're like me, you're on a tight budget all the way around. I've had people say, well, you guys raise this money to send those Gideons overseas. That's not quite true, is it, Gail? If you see a Gideon at an airport, I don't care where it is, China, South Africa, it doesn't matter. That Gideon paid his own way there. He pays out of his pocket to go. There's no money taken from the Gideon ministry to do that. We're one of the fine-streamed uh, organizations there is. The monies we take in is money used to buy Bibles, send scriptures. That's what we're about. That's what we do. And my hat's off to those guys that do travel and do go. But I'm going to tell you this. When they get back, you should hear some of the testimonies those men have. It's fascinating to hear how God's working in people's lives. It's amazing. We ask you, if you can, give us a donation this morning. We will use that money to buy Bibles, to place scriptures, not only within the United States here, but around the world, to see that God's word's being taken. Uh, gentlemen mentioned this morning, but, was, but the missionaries, and, and how things are rapidly changing around them. They are. Look, I believe very much the crisis return is very quick. It's not far down the road. We should all be concerned about people who do not know the Lord. We should have that on our minds and our hearts. We should be reaching out. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. As I know you are here because of your missionary that you have placed. Support them. 
Support them. The work they're doing is important. And I'll tell you something. Keep them in your prayers because that is dangerous. In a lot of places they're at, it's dangerous. So keep them in your prayers. As I said, if you can help us out with a donation, we'd greatly appreciate it. We'll use it to, uh, to buy Bibles and place around the world. Uh, if you can't, that's fine too, but we will ask you to do this. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the Gideons in your prayers because we need them. We need them very much so. I will uh, ask your band to come up, your, your praise band, I believe it is. And I would once again say thank you so much to the church for allowing us to come in and join you this morning. Uh, I pray that we've said something to you that might make a difference in your life. As you saw with Leroy Kennedy, there's nothing you've done that Jesus Christ can't forgive you for. If you don't have him in your heart this morning, please talk to somebody. Please don't leave here without having him in, without at least checking him out, because he wants to check you.